Hey, howdy everyone. We're going to do a discussion right now on uncertainty for the subsurface. And so we have a lot to talk about. It's a broad topic with many, many considerations that we should cover. We'll go through sources of uncertainty, talk about how we represent uncertainty, how we calculate uncertainty, how do we sample uncertainty, and then given that, how do we summarize uncertainty? And then, well, we'll provide a summary of uncertainty at the very end. Now, I'm going to break this up into multiple videos that would be just way too long and kind of unwieldy if I was to put it into one single lecture. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I should note I am recording from home and there was a person who asked the question and I'll answer that question right now by doing this. Yes, my guitar is behind me. In case you're wondering where was the guitar in my home office, it's right behind me. It's just behind me. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. We'll talk about sources of uncertainty. And so the first thing we'll say is that uncertainty is not an intrinsic property of the subsurface. In fact, at every single location within the subsurface, there is a true property. It could be measured. If we had the ability, and maybe if I was a super person, a superman, and I could look with x-ray vision into the subsurface and see every possible cubic centimeter or small bit of the subsurface, I would be able to look down and observe the property of interest, and I would know it completely over the study area. In fact, if you go down there, if you could, and ask the Earth, what is the porosity at that location? The Earth doesn't look at you and say, um, I don't know. No, the Earth knows what the value is down there. In fact, what can we say? Uncertainty is a function of our ignorance. I'm not being rude, but it's just the truth. It's our inability to observe and measure the subsurface with the coverage and scale that's required to support our decision making, to be able to answer our scientific questions. What does it all mean? Sparsity of sample data. We can't see it all plus the heterogeneity in the subsurface equals uncertainty. In fact, you could imagine if the subsurface was homogeneous, with just few or maybe a single measurement, uncertainty would immediately vanish. We would be able to know what was going on at all locations away from that sample because it was homogeneous. It doesn't change, but it does. In fact, our Earth and all of its grandeur is quite an amazing, heterogeneous, complicated system to understand. And, well, that makes it fun. So we're okay with that. But we have to live with it. Now let's talk about various sources of uncertainty. I'll cover three sources of uncertainty that matter to us. There's a lot more we could get into about uncertainty at different scales, different concepts, different pieces of information. But in general, these three should hold most of the time. Measurement interpretation error. You imagine if you were to take a well log going down the well and you measure some type of um, property of interest, you'd recognize immediately that it's an indirect measure of the subsurface, that there was, in the case of formation evaluation through well logging, there's tool tolerance, the tool has error. There's situation or the circumstances within the hole that can also have an impact on the accuracy of the tool calibration error, approximations, there's assumptions. Often we have to make assumptions about the specific rock and fluid system in order to be able to make these measurements meaningful. Then there's interpretation on top of that. We have the measurement, the indirect measurement with its error, but then we have to interpret it and say something about what's going on. This will require experience, it's prior models and assumptions. But of course, this will result in more uncertainty there could be interpretation and measurement uncertainty involved here. So how do we integrate it? Well, we've already talked about indicator-based methods a while ago. That's one of the beauty of the indicator-based formulation, is you can in fact take the data and code it with a probability coding based on thresholds or categories, and by using a set of probabilities that are soft, in other words, not just zero and 100%, you could encode the softness of your data, the uncertainty in the data. Another approach, if you're not using indicator-based approaches, would be multiple data realizations. You actually first simulate a realization of the data, given the local distributions of uncertainty. You could use something like p-field-based simulation to do that. And then you go ahead and use that realization of the data to build a realization away from the data. 
So it's a two-step process to incorporate the data. One way or the other, you'll find most of the time that our data is in fact not hard data, that most of the data that we work with has some degree of softness if you interrogate it closely enough. Spatial uncertainty. Even if we know perfectly what's going on at the well location, we still don't know what's going on between the wells. Even if we know exactly what the scenario is, and I'll talk about scenarios next, but we know it's channels, we know it's lobes, we know it's some type of a diagenetically altered rework system with a degree of stochasticity. It doesn't matter. Even if you know perfectly well what's going on within the system globally, and you know what's going on at the data, you do not know, do not know exactly what's going on between the data. That's spatial uncertainty. That's the problem of estimating away from the data locations. That's the second source of uncertainty. The third source is the scenario, the statistics, the modeling decisions. All of the parameters in the model are uncertain. In fact, you go and you calculate a varigram, and many times people will be accustomed to this. You calculate a varigram, and it's difficult to interpret. The points are noisy. You've got too few pairs. It's difficult to actually fit a model. There's uncertainty. I've seen cases in which the varigram range uncertainty was wide enough that it had significant impact on the economics of the project. This can happen. Trends are very important. It's the decomposition of uncertainty into the known and unknown bins. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. We've talked about trend modeling before, but the trend model itself could also be uncertain, which does sound a bit paradoxical, but it would be a hierarchical way to model. You could say that the trend model was uncertain, and then given the trend scenarios, you could build multiple realizations around that, capturing or propagating that uncertainty through the model. We can see that all of our modeling decisions could also have associated uncertainty that we could capture and propagate through the model with scenarios. We'll talk in more detail shortly about that. Next, we'll have a discussion about representing uncertainty, and I'll break that up into a separate video. All right, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, we'll keep going, just keep following along the videos. All right, see you.